who is the real and true God. All gods are included. In this article, we will discuss who is the real and true God. We will clarify the attributes of a true God and mention the most popular worshipped gods in the world. The article will review the attributes of these gods objectively as believed by their original followers. It will also answer the most commonly asked critical questions regarding this topic. Here we will learn the following. 1. Are all religions worshipping the same God? 2. Is the concept of God true? 3. How many gods are there? 4. Is God one or three or more? 5. What are the attributes of a true God? 6. Are Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva the true God? 7. Is Buddha the true God? 8. Is Yahweh or Jehovah the true God? 9. Is Jesus the true God? 1. Is Muhammad the true God in Islam? 1. 1. Is Allah the true God? 1. 2. Do all religions lead to the true God? Introduction Are all religions worshipping the same God? People all over the world tend to believe in a supreme power that handles the universe or even holds their happiness and well being. That is regardless of their background or religion. Even atheists who claim to believe in no hidden power namely God, who believe in the power of nature or even the power of money, family, or success. In response to such beliefs, people raise this power to the status of a deity where they dignify this power and follow it in different ways, worship. This widely varies among people, where they differ in their perception of this supreme power, God, and their way of worship. If we acknowledge there are numerous worshipped gods nowadays, which of these numerous gods could be true? Is the concept of God true? First, to discuss which God could be true, we should initially agree on the presence of God. Although that is not our scope of research in this context, we will simply clarify it in this section. In brief, the presence of God is essentially logical and intellectually compatible. The creation of the world from nothing, the precise engineering of the universe, the care we encounter during life, and several revelations calling to God as well as many other reasons. Our evidence of the inevitability of God. Besides, imagining the opposite leads to the feeling of chaos, irrationality, and confusion. That's actually not the case in this harmonized, precisely created universe. In fact, science unveils its secrets from time to time to support the fact of the presence of God. How many gods are there? There are numerous worshipped gods worldwide that are estimated to be hundreds or even thousands. The exact numbers are unclear and vary between different researchers. In this article, we will discuss the major names claimed thought to be divine throughout the most popular religions. It is apparently impossible to include all gods or goddesses all over history in a single article. However, we will include the basis and standards by which any person could decide for any claimed god whether he is true or not. Is God one or three or more? God should be one and couldn't be three or more. This could be explained by understanding the true meaning of God. God is the highest, the most powerful, the most glorified of all. He is unique in his attributes and no one should be equal or similar to him. If we assume there is more than one God, then we actually denied the divinity of them all. That's because we made them equal whereas God should always be unique. Besides, if we made one God more superior to the others, then we actually acknowledged the concept of oneness and denied other gods. Assuming these less superior gods are a kind of helpers or responsible for certain divine actions is actually an insult to God. Also, the concept of polytheism allows chaos in the universe and negates any form of harmonization we see in it. What are the attributes of a true God? The attributes of a true God have specific standards. The term God requires special, indispensable, logical qualities that are associated with him being God. Number 1 God is one. The true God should be one and couldn't be more. As we discussed in the previous section, polytheism logically negates the very true definition of God as being the most superior of all. It also assumes that this universe is shared by many deities. It is impossible as these powerful deities would intervene in each other's power which limits their extreme power and negates the fact in this precise, harmonized world. Number 2 God is unique. The true God should be unique where no one is similar to him at all. That is because if God is like any of his creations, he wouldn't be more than a creation himself. If God is needy, with limited abilities, exposed to dangers, and dies like his creation, then he couldn't be God. The sustainer of all shouldn't be sustained. The one who holds the life of all, shouldn't die. The one who created the heavens and earth shouldn't be weak. Number 3 God is superior. The true God's attributes are superior to anything and everything. He knows more than anyone, he has the highest strength and power, he sees better than anyone, he hears more than anyone. Etc. The one who created everything should be superior to what he created. Number 4 God has the best attributes. The true God should have the best of attributes. 
His attributes should be exceptional and perfect. He should be the all-knowing, the merciful, the wise, the omnipotent, etc. He shouldn't by any means be unjust, limited, needy, or ignorant. The imperfection and limitedness are the attributes of creation, which shouldn't apply to the Creator. Our Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva the true God. Brahma is the God of creation, Shiva is the destroyer, and Vishnu is the protector according to Hinduism. After comprehensive research in the Hindu faith, we concluded that they couldn't be the true God for several reasons, and we will mention some. 1. Hindu God had associated partners and sons. Hinduism is a polytheistic belief that includes several gods and goddesses. This fact negates the oneness of God which is one of the fundamental attributes of a true God. 2. Brahma sprang from the cosmic golden egg. It was mentioned in Hindu references that Brahma sprang from the cosmic golden egg. This fact appears quite fictional as how could Brahma, who is thought to be the creator in Hindu beliefs have a beginning rather than such a fictional one. 3. Brahma had several wives. Brahma had several wives. His wives bore him sons and Vedas, the holy books of Hinduism. This end dot negates the fact that God should be unique and superior over his creation. God doesn't have wives as do human beings. He actually doesn't need that and is far above sexual relationships or desires. The holy scriptures of God are, in fact the words of God and his revelation. They are not born of God as this doesn't make sense. 4. Hindu gods feared men's power. Hindu gods feared men could become more powerful and challenge their reign. This idea is, by all means negating the attributes of a true God. It associates fear, weakness, and challenge to God, which is actually an insult to God. Is Buddha the true God? Buddha cannot be the true God. Buddha is the founder of one of the major religions in the world, Buddhism. In fact, he didn't claim to be God or divine. However, he was the first to reach the state of enlightenment according to Buddhists. Buddhists don't even believe in a specific god or deity. Is Yahweh or Jehovah the true god? Jehovah is the English translation of the name Yahweh who is the god believed in by Jews. The concept of God in the Old Testament tends to be the humanization of God. This is apparent in several verses where they describe God in the attributes of a limited human being. These are some of these attributes according to the Bible Old Testament. God was described as a man having white hair and white clothes. When he gets angry, smoke comes out of his nose and fire comes out of his mouth. Psalm 18 verse 8 He transports by riding an angel. He got a rest out of tiredness after he finished the creation of the heavens and earth. Genesis 2 verse 2 He quarreled with one of his messengers, Jacob, where Jacob defeated him. Genesis 32 verses 22 to 32 These attributes make God a weak, limited human being, not a superior, powerful God. This actually doesn't make Jehovah the true God. Is Jesus the true God? Jesus couldn't be the true God. He is a human being who was born from the womb of a woman, ate food, wore clothes, rode donkeys, and finally crucified and died, according to a Christian's belief. All these attributes support the fact of his humanity, not his divinity. His miracles don't necessarily support his divinity. However, it supports the fact he was sent with a revelation from the true God. Jesus couldn't be the Son of God. As we previously clarified, God is superior and unique where he doesn't bear sons. Besides, God doesn't need to crucify his claimed son to forgive people's sins, he is the best forgiver. He is also just and doesn't punish someone for the sin of another. Is Muhammad the true God in Islam? Muhammad is not the true God. He is a human being with limited attributes and qualities. Muhammad never claimed to be God nor ordered people to worship him. However, he said he is God's servant and messenger who was sent with a revelation from God like the previous messengers. Muhammad, peace and blessing of Allah be upon him, said, Do not exaggerate in praising me as the Christians exaggeratedly praise the Son of Mary, Jesus Christ, for I am only a slave. So, call me the slave of Allah and his messenger. Sahih al-Bukhari 3445 Is Allah the true God? Allah is not a special God for Muslims. However, Allah is the Arabic name of the true God. Allah is the same word used by Christian and Jewish Arabs in the Bible. When we refer to Allah, we usually use the pronoun he. He is used only out of respect and dignity, not for gender. Allah's attributes were mentioned in his revelations throughout history. His final preserved revelation, the Quran mentions his attributes which perfectly match the attributes of the true God. We will clarify these attributes in the following paragraphs.
A. The Oneness of Allah God says in the Quran He is only one. He stressed on the fact of His oneness several times in the Holy Book, the Quran. 1. Allah clarified His oneness. Allah clarified His oneness in plenty of verses. We will only mention a few in that context. Allah said in the Quran, And your God is one God. There is no deity, worthy of worship, except Him, the entirely merciful, the especially merciful. Quran 2 163 O people, your Allah is the true Allah, the one, unique in His essence and attributes. There is no other true God, and He is the merciful and His mercy is vast. He is compassionate with His creation, surrounding them with many blessings. Al-Baqarah 163 He also said, Allah. There is no God worthy of worship except Him, Quran 2 255. Allah is the one who alone deserves to be worshipped. He is the one who lives perfectly without any death or deficiency. He exists by Himself and is not in need of any of His creation. The creation only exists through Him and is always in need of Him. Drowsiness or sleep does not come upon Him due to the perfection of His life and existence. He alone controls the heavens and the earth. No one can intercede before Him without His acceptance and permission. He knows what has happened in the past and what will happen in the future. The creation has no share in His knowledge unless He wills to grant them some of it. His throne covers the vastness of the heavens and the earth. It is not difficult for Him to preserve the heaven and the earth. He is high in His essence and attributes and great in His dominion and authority. Al-Baqarah 255 Allah revealed to all prophets He is one. He said, We never sent a messenger before you O Prophet without revealing to him, there is no God worthy of worship except me, so worship me alone. Quran 2125 And I have not sent before you, O Messenger, any messenger except that I revealed to him that there is no true God except me, so worship me alone and do not associate any partner with me. al Anbiya 25 2. Allah responded to those who associate partners with Allah. Allah responded to those who associate partners with Allah by stating that they all perish, die, and become destroyed except Allah. And do not invoke any other God with Allah. There is no God worthy of worship except Him. Everything is bound to perish except He Himself. All authority belongs to Him. And to Him, you will all be returned. Quran 28 And do not worship alongside Allah any God besides Him. There is no true God besides Him. Everything will perish besides His face. For Him alone is the judgment, He judges as He wishes. And to Him alone you will be returned on the day of judgment to be reckoned and rewarded. al Cases 288 Allah also clarified that these allegedly claimed deities other than with Allah don't hold any good or harm for anyone, so, how come they make them gods? Tell them, O Prophet, how can you worship besides Allah those who can neither harm nor benefit you? Quran 5 hours 76 minutes Say, O Messenger, as an argument against their worship of others besides Allah, do you worship that which can bring you no benefit and which cannot protect you from any harm? Such a God is in reality very weak. Whilst Allah is high above any state of weakness. Allah alone is the one who hears your statements and knows your actions. Nothing remains hidden from Him and He will repay you accordingly. al 76 Allah clarified that those false deities are only weak creatures like yourselves. Indeed, those you, polytheists, call upon besides Allah are servants, i.e., creations, like you. So call upon them and let them respond to you if you should be truthful. Quran 7 194 Those you call upon instead of Allah were created by Allah, and belong to Him, so they are the same as you in that way, although you are better in that you are living, and are able to speak and walk. And hear and see, while your idols are not so. Call on them and let them respond to you if you are telling the truth in what you say about them. al Araf 194 Allah clarified that those false deities cannot create even a small fly. O humanity! A lesson is set forth, so listen to it carefully, those, false deities, you invoke besides Allah can never create so much as a fly, even if they all were to come together for that. Quran 22 73 O people! A parable is about to be narrated, so listen carefully and take lesson from it. Indeed, those idols and other things you worship instead of Allah cannot even create a fly despite its small size, because of their incompetence. Even if they were to convene in trying to do so they would not be able to achieve it. And if a fly was to take anything away from them, i.e. perfume etc. they would not have the power to reclaim it. By their incapability of creating a fly and reclaiming anything from it, their incapability of doing anything greater than that becomes evident. How can they then worship it instead of Allah? This seeker, which is the worshipped idol that is totally incapable of reclaiming whatever the fly has taken from it, together with the sought-after fly, are both weak. Al-Hajj, 73 
3. Allah responded to polytheists. Allah clarified that if there were gods other than Allah, this universe would be in chaos. He said, had there been other gods besides Allah in the heavens or the earth, both realms would have surely been corrupted. Quran 21:22. If there were numerous gods in the heavens and the earth, they would have been ruined, due to the gods disputing in the kingdom. But the reality is not like this. So Allah, Lord of the throne, is pure of the lie the idolaters describe him with, namely that he has partners. And Allah is alone in his kingdom and decree. Nobody can ask him what he has decreed and ordered, whilst he will ask his servants about their actions and will reward them accordingly. Al Anbiya, 22 23. Allah clarified that if there were gods beside Allah, they would dominate over each other. Allah has never had any offspring, nor is there any god besides him. Otherwise, each god would have taken away what he created, and they would have tried to dominate one another. Quran 23 hours 91 minutes. It's not taken a child as the disbelievers claim, nor is there any true deity alongside him. If there were to be any true deity alongside him, every deity would take his share of the creation he made and they would dominate one another, causing the order of the universe to become corrupt. The reality is that none of this has occurred, proving that the true deity is Allah alone. He is pure and holy of what the idolaters describe him with, namely partners and children which are unbefitting for him. al muminin 91 4. Allah responded to those who claimed a wife and son to God. Allah said he is glorified to have a son. He said, and they say, the most merciful has taken, for himself, a son. You have done an atrocious thing. The heavens almost rupture at it, and the earth splits and the mountains fall, crumbling, that they have attributed a son to the all-merciful. And it is not appropriate for the most merciful that he should take a son. Quran 19 88-92 The Jews, the Christians, and some of the idolaters said, the merciful has taken a son. You, who say this, have indeed brought something monstrous. The heavens almost rupture because of this detested statement, the earth almost splits, and the mountains almost fall in ruins. All of this because they have attributed a son to the merciful. Allah is high above that by far. It is not befitting of the merciful to take a son as he is pure of that. There is no angel, human being or jinn in the heavens and earth but that he will come in submission to his Lord on the day of judgment. He has full knowledge of them and has numbered them exactly. Nothing of theirs is hidden from him. Each one of them will come to him on the day of judgment alone, without any helper or any wealth. Maryam, 88-95 Allah doesn't have a son, as he doesn't have a wife in the first place. How could he have a son when he does not have a companion, i.e., wife, Quran 6 101. He, may he be glorified, is the creator of the heavens and the earth without any precedent. How can he have a child when he has no wife? He created everything and knows everything. Nothing is hidden from. Alanam 100-101 5. Allah commented on Jews and Christians' belief in God. Allah commented on Jews and Christians' beliefs many times in the Quran. Allah said he sent them revelations through prophets and messengers such as Moses, Jesus, and finally, Muhammad to worship Allah alone without any partners. This indicates that submission to God alone, which is the literal meaning of the word Islam, was the message of all prophets. However, they mimic the beliefs of others who used to associate others with Allah. It is apparent through history that modern Christianity is somehow inspired by the old Greek philosophy and beliefs. Allah said in the Quran, and the Jews said, Ezra is the son of Allah, and the Christians said, the Messiah is the son of Allah. They emulate the saying of those who denied earlier. Quran 930 The Jews and the Christians associate partners with Allah, the Jews do so by claiming that, Yusair is the son of Allah. And the Christians do so by claiming that the Messiah, Jesus, is the son of Allah. What they say with their own mouths is simply made up without any proof from Allah. By saying such things, they are similar to the idolaters before them, who said that the angels were the daughters of Allah. Allah is far above such things, may Allah destroy them. How can they turn away from the clear truth to falsehood? At Taba, 30. They have taken their rabbis and their monks as lords apart from Allah, as well as the Messiah, son of Mary, although they were commanded to worship none but one God, Allah, Quran 931. The Jews made their rabbis lords instead of Allah, as did the Christians with their monks, by allowing them to permit what Allah had forbidden them and forbidding what Allah had allowed for them. And the Christians made the Messiah, Jesus the son of Mary, a God next to Allah. As well as, Uzair and Jesus the son of Mary, to worship him alone, and not to associate anything with him. He, glory be to him, is the only God, and there is nothing worthy of worship except him. He is, glory be to him, sacred, far above having any partner that these idolaters and others claim.
At Taba, 31. B. Allah is unique. Allah is unique and different from His creation. This fact is clarified in the Quran in several verses. Allah said, There is nothing like Him, for He alone is the all-hearing, all-seeing. Quran 42 11. Allah is always described as being unique. You would never find qualities of His creation associated with Him. He is always glorified, beyond limitedness. See, Allah is superior. Allah is superior over His creation. He is the Most High, the Most Powerful, the Most Omnipotent. Allah clarified His superiority in several verses as, Glorify the name of your Lord, the Most High, Quran 87,1. Declare the transcendence of your Lord who is high above His creation, by uttering His name when you remember and revere Him. Allah 1. Unlike other false gods, you would never find Allah described as being weak or defeated by anyone. D. Allah has the best attributes. Allah has the best and the perfect attributes. He is far away from imperfection. He is the just, the all-knowing, the most merciful, the most forgiving, etc. Allah said in the Quran, Allah, there is no God worthy of worship except Him. He has the most beautiful names. Quran 20 8. Allah, there is no being deserving of worship besides Him. To Him alone belong the perfect names that have reached the most complete level of perfection and excellence. Taha, 8. He also said, Allah has the most beautiful names. So call upon him by them, and keep away from those who deviate his names from the truth, Quran 7 180. To Allah, glory be to him, belongs the most beautiful names which show his majesty and perfection. So use them to call on Allah when you ask for whatever you wish for. Also leave those who turn away from the truth of these names by assigning them to false deities, or denying them, or distorting their meanings. Allah will repay those who do this with a painful punishment. al Raf 180 you would never find Allah described by fearing anyone or anything or punishing someone for the sin of another. Read the Quran to explore more about Allah's perfect attributes. Conclusion Do all religions lead to the true God? All religions don't lead to the true God. Each religion has its own perception of God or the supreme power behind this universe which may be due to a true revelation from God or due to influence of culture and folklore. In this article, we discuss the most popular worshipped gods all over the world. We clarify the attributes that should logically apply to the true God. Then, we examine the attributes of each god to see if he truly fits these attributes. After a long research, we reach the conclusion that Allah is the one true god who deserves worship. We clarified his attributes in detail and mention supporting evidence from his final revelation the Quran. It is worth mentioning that Allah is the true god worshipped by all previous messengers as Abraham, Moses, and Jesus. However, people corrupted their message and lost the true authentic scriptures.